Good Monday evening, everyone. It's 21 News. Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It is the video we call Weather for Weather Geeks. Actually, this is the last Weather Geeks we'll do for about nine days. I have some time off starting uh, the evening of the uh, 4th of July, taking me uh, through early next week. So, uh, thankfully, the weather will be fairly quiet, at least in the near term. Once we uh, get through some evening showers, we're expecting some pretty nice things for the 4th of July. Lots to talk about this evening in the short range and the long range. Let's t start with a review of where we've been over the last seven days. Of course, it's been pretty unsettled over the last few days, and the rainfall totals have been pretty impressive in parts of our area. Now, there's been a pretty big gradient from northwest to southeast uh, in terms of rainfall totals over the last several days. Less than an inch, pretty common in a lot of Trumbull County, northwestern Mahoning County as well, but some places in southeastern uh, Columbiana County, down towards West Point, East Liverpool, uh, Rogers, places like that, three, four, even close to five inches worth of rain. Pretty common. Same idea over into uh, central and western parts of Lawrence County. We uh, have had a few bouts of really heavy rain over the last few days. When we look kind of at the uh, long-term average here, uh, rainfall, not average, but long-term total, I should say, uh, rainfall over the last 30 days, again, we're still running some pretty good deficits in a lot of Trumbull County, uh, western parts of Mahoning, into far western parts of Columbiana as well, over towards the Alliance and Minerva areas. Um, but once you get down towards East Liverpool, you know, we're running way above average now when you look back over the last 30 days. A lot of this has occurred just over the last week, but some uh, rainfall surpluses now. East Liverpool, East Palestine, Elwood City, uh, over towards uh, Newcastle, and uh, even up towards uh, Grove City and New Wilmington as well. So yeah, it, you know, that's kind of common, of course, in the summer season where you get variable amounts of rainfall. Now, at the Youngstown Warren Airport, as of the issuance of the climate report at about, oh, it was about 520 this evening, nothing in the rain gauge at that point. A couple of showers have been roaming around parts of Trumbull County uh, late this afternoon, early this evening. But earlier this afternoon, we still were at zero. Overall, a seasonable day today, 62 on the low side and 83 on the high side this afternoon. All right, if you're paying attention to the weather last evening, we had some pretty nasty storms in parts of our area. We didn't have any severe weather in our local TV market. But we did have a funnel cloud, a lot of pictorial and video evidence of a uh, funnel cloud down into Tuscarawas County, especially south and east of New Philly, down towards Eurexville. And uh, this funnel cloud was spotted over towards Bowerston as well, uh, Sherrodsville area in southwestern Carroll County. Now, the National Weather Service office in Pittsburgh is going to uh, survey some localized damage here, damage here, I should say, to see if there was an actual tornado that reached the ground at some point. We also had some... Uh, Wind damage, uh, scattered reports of wind damage closer to Steubenville, uh, south of Columbiana County, late last evening. Uh, as of this recording at, at 7.04 this evening, we had a one downpour near East Palestine and Unity, a scattering of showers elsewhere, but these will fade away as we go through the evening. And the severe weather threat this evening is well to our east. Big severe thunderstorm watch from the Hudson Valley in New York State down through the Poconos in Pennsylvania, all of New Jersey is under that watch all of Delaware and most of Maryland under that watch. This includes Washington, D.C., heading down towards Virginia Beach as well. Our sky will partially clear for a while this evening, allowing us to check out the full moon in the month of July. It's called the full buck moon, and actually this is what we call a super moon. It's the first of four consecutive full, full moons that are technically super moons. And again, just a reminder in case you don't know what a super moon is, uh, it's a, a full moon that coincides with the point in the moon's orbit around the Earth in which it's closest to the Earth. So the moon appears fractionally larger than a typical full moon to the naked eye. Pretty hard to tell. Uh, but it is technically a larger full moon than a standard issue full moon. All right, of course, we have the 4th of July coming up for tomorrow. Lots of people want to be outdoors. And great news in the forecast department. It's going to be a pretty nice day. And not quite as hot as last year. We had 89 last year. We had 89 back in 2019. We had 92 in 2018. We're expecting mid-80s tomorrow. By the way, the coolest high temperature on the 4th of July on record, 1967. It was just 65 for a daytime high. The hottest overall temperature on the 4th in our local area back in 1949, we had 96. This year, though, a little more seasonable, a little above average by the afternoon. Now, don't be fooled or discouraged by the clouds first thing in the morning. Could be a touch of fog, maybe some clouds around at the start of the day, but I think the afternoon will be fairly sunny, very nice outside. Dew points start to come down a little bit. It's not going to be a huge change, but overall, very nice afternoon and evening for anything you want to do outdoors. Hitting area rivers and lakes, the pool, setting off those fireworks in the evening, we should be in fine shape for our 
Tuesday. So, clouds will break for some sunshine Tuesday as we go into the day on Wednesday. Expecting another dry day with a good deal of sun. Uh, not sure what the model is picking up on here on Wednesday, trying to spit out a couple of random showers. Not going to buy that. We are uh, dry, we think, through most of Thursday. Later Thursday, though, this cold front approaches, and by Thursday evening, maybe there's a shower or storm. Don't think this front's going to squeeze out a lot of moisture. Spotty shower or storm, uh, also a possibility into parts of Thursday night and Friday morning. Temperatures will probably peak Wednesday into Thursday in the upper 80s, flirting with 90, but then more comfortable air settles in behind that front just in time for the weekend. It's, you know, it's not going to be in the 60s or anything for daytime highs, but just kind of back to normal, back to average for uh, early to mid-July by Friday in the weekend. That means highs mostly near 80 or so, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that'll be the case next week. I don't see a lot of heat building in as we head towards next week. Uh, this is our first chance to talk about the overall July outlook uh, forecasts from the Climate Prediction Center, and I generally like what they have out, showing uh, elevated odds of a wetter than average month. This is a change compared to the pretty dry pattern we've been in in our part of the country for a lot of May, or all of May, I should say, and a good chunk of June. It got a little wetter later in June, but uh, overall May and June back-to-back -back were pretty dry months. July, though, should feature a more active storm track cutting across like this, giving us not only chances for more rain than we've had in the last couple months, but maybe some more opportunities for severe weather. Of course, we've been very lacking in the severe weather department going back all the way through early April. Perse or, uh, temperature wise, I should say, nothing remarkable temperature wise about the month of July. Not going to be surprised if we end up less than a degree on either side of average. Cooler than average, warmer than average, but not by a big margin. I, again, I don't think there's a lot of high heat, at least in the uh, next couple of weeks. Don't see a lot of uh, indications that the pattern will support you know, some sort of random 95 degree day or something. We had a couple of those last year. Don't see a lot of signs of that coming anytime real soon as we hit the heart of summer here in the month of July. Again, this is the last Weather for Weather Geeks we're going to do until Wednesday the 12th. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, hope you, you and yours have a great and safe 4th of July holiday and a great rest of the week as well. Uh, I'll be, uh, of course, posting on social media as needed uh, during my time off as the weather warrants, but yeah, it looks pretty quiet for Wednesday and Thursday and most of Friday and the weekend as well.